Hey, sorry about that. A little Zoom problem there. How's your day going otherwise? No worries. I'm doing great. How are you? Great. Thank you very much. And so much I want to ask you about because I not only love your old projects, but I love the new movie. Or is it a new movie? Thank you. It is a new movie. It is. We shot it before COVID, but it's a new movie. One thing I wasn't able to tell is the exteriors are Seattle, but the credits keep thanking British Columbia. Was it filmed in both British Columbia and Seattle? It was actually shot 100% in Vancouver. Got it. <laughs> Got it. Well, thanks to the Canadian authorities for that one. Had you spent a lot of time in British Columbia before making this movie? I actually have. Yeah, I actually have. Um, I love Canada. I love British Columbia. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. I can imagine. So the movie, I don't want to give too much away because if I say, well, that part when you dot, 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 like that kind of gives away some of the stuff, but oh. you do sing in the film two different songs. Yeah. Do you have a singing background? Um, I have a dance background and uh, I've always been writing songs and, and I just started releasing music um, last year in quarantine <laughs> as a lot of us with uh, creative projects that were sort of on the back burner finally got to to get to them uh, during quarantine in 2020. So, so yeah, so singing is now part of my, the plethora of things that I do. Well, way back when you were starting, was it, I want to be a dancer and then acting happened or what was the original plan? It was definitely to be a dancer. Yeah, I, uh, I started dancing when I was four years old. I told my parents, you are sending me to ballet. I don't know, you're gonna to have to figure it out. I think I, like I went with a friend once and I came home and I was just elated and I just knew it had to be part of my life. Um, and then I got to about 15 or 14 and I, I started auditioning for commercials and stuff like that. I'd always like done modeling and stuff like that and, and I just fell in love with it. Uh, you may or may not dance in this movie. I don't wanna give away any <laughs> But if you did dance in this movie, was that choreographed or improvised? That was choreographed. That was uh, that was choreographed. We had uh, Nick and I did a couple of lessons with a with a choreographer, and uh, yeah, worked it out. Because an interesting thing about that, if you did dance in the movie, um, is that <laughs> the way that it's portrayed is that you don't know how to dance and yeah. he's the dance master. Yet I can't imagine Nick, who's incredibly talented, great guitar player beyond being a great comic and apparently a great actor, uh, it's portrayed that he's the dance master and you don't know how to dance. So did he have much of an uphill battle with that choreography? Um, actually, no, I don't know. Maybe he secretly had a couple lessons in his life, you know? There's a couple of people walking around, they don't look like dancers, but like <laughs> their parents sent them to like one class when they were a kid, so they just have this sort of aptitude. Um, no, weirdly, he was actually quite good with it. Um, I was better, obviously, but um, <laughs> but I, I then my job was like having to try to act like I didn't know how to and then also the movie magic of it just happening anyway, because you know, you wanna see that happen, so yeah. Usually when you get cast for a film that has named people like yourself, I'm saying you're a name person, you didn't say that, <laughs> and, and Nick, whatever your job is according to your character, you usually get to moonlight or ghost a little bit. Did you do any romance novel related research for this role? I didn't, honestly, I signed on to this movie. I think we had two weeks before we started shooting. So it was more getting in touch with like Annie Hall, Elaine Benners, you know, some of my favorite comedy characters um, and just doing it from there rather than the romance novel part. Because to me, it was more about what a flawed individual she is and how awkward she can be and how zany she can be. Wow, so no guitar lessons either as part of the research? I did, I did some guitar lessons. That was something that I did, yeah. yeah. Wow, uh, the song without naming the song that you may or may not play within this movie <laughs> is a two to three chord song. Can you play that song? Uh, not now, um, I wish I would kept up. I wish, honestly, I've always wanted to play guitar. So I really, I thought if I keep doing this, I will be able to play, but I unfortunately, you know, I've been really busy, so I didn't get to, but I'm getting around to it. Well, one of the favorite things that my wife and I have 
about you for you is you're never the same in any of your roles. It's not, you're like, well, Clea's in this movie, she's going to be blank. Like this role has nothing to do with what you did on Better Things or one of my favorite shows of all time, Last Man on Earth. You're different in everything. Do you have a way of describing your preparation? Because I don't see you as method. Um, you know, it's, I think it's to do with the way I pick my roles. I think for me, they just, I don't know what it is. I don't think there's a rhyme or reason to it. I think it's just, if it's a character that I'm like, oh, I get her, I understand her. For whatever reason, maybe she's similar to me, maybe she's really different to me, or she's like someone I've spent time with, or she's the type of person that I'm curious about. I think that's really where it comes from. And then from there, I mean, my tastes are really broad. So then it just ends up being, you know, sci-fi, comedy, combination of the two. Um, yeah. Is there a role or two which you could say is most similar to who you are? Because I can't tell right now. Like you are not as serious as Erica Dundee was. And you obviously have your life much more together than this character from the right one. Yeah, I would say I'm actually, it's funny you mentioned that. Now that you've asked, I feel like I might be, if I have to choose, because obviously people are quite complicated, but <laughs> I'm like a bit of a combination between Sarah and Erica in, in a way, maybe. But I can be really serious. I don't know, man. I'm just like all over the place. <laughs> Something that I'm curious about, whenever you find somebody has made it again i'm saying you made it you didn't say you made it because a lot of people are very modest you did? oh my god <laughs> is when you see somebody you like they've they've been in those couple of films those couple of tv shows you watch mm -hmm. you kind of wonder do they have a lot of roles or things that didn't happen over the years before they got to this point oh yeah Oh yeah, still. I mean, there's still, there was a show I really, really wanted to do that I didn't get just recently. I mean, it's happening constantly. It's part of the job. And, you know, I've been doing this since I was 15. So I have this really great thing where like, I just forget. Like, I couldn't tell you. There's so many like huge movies that, you know, you've seen that people have seen that I, you know, was very close to being in, but wasn't. And, you know, you just sort of, you'd forget. <laughs> um, I remember watching, there was like, uh, they released some um, screen tests from Titanic with like other actors in it. And it's so interesting how like, yeah, it could have been that other actor, but it so shouldn't have been. Like it it only was gonna be Leo. You can, it just always was. Mm -hmm. It's such a funny thing casting. So that's why you can't take it personally because you either are them or you're not them, you know? And sorry, the third reference here to Last Man on Earth, maybe the fourth right here. Oh, it is one of my, coming. I love it. One of my favorite shows of all time. It, it, you know, its cancellation is just one of the saddest, most biggest injustices in the history of television, according to our household, which is, of course, uh, a big deal, our household. But when you read it, did you get that it was that great? Or is it just like, yeah, it's an audition. Uh, if I get it, cool. You know, um, it was so top secret that all I got was the audition scenes. And it all I knew was that it was extremely awkward. It sort of like tickled a funny part of my brain, you know, like it, it was funny in ways that's normal, but yeah. there was also something very Will Forte about it. Yeah. That sort of oddness coming at it from that specific angle that he comes at it from and that I picked up on but it was it was just one of many auditions that week then I got wow. a call back with Will then I got another call back with um Chris Miller and Phil Lord and you know I think I did maybe three callbacks and then finally finally I got the job and, it, and then I got to read the whole script and, and find out you know what what it was really going to be the character on that show, uh, the last name was Dundee, which is hilarious. <laughs> when you moved to the States, did you know of the crocodile Dundee kind of stereotypes that if you're Australian, you like silver chair and you like that? Yeah. Was that on your radar? Well, I do like silver chair. That's <laughs> um oh, of course. I mean, I'd heard stories about people like Anthony LaPaglia, who's Australian coming to America early, you know, before all of us came in the early 90s, I believe. And he actually just pretended to be American because the Crocodile Dundee thing was so prevalent and he was so tired of, you know, being compared to that character. So yeah, I'm definitely aware of it, but there's so many of us now, you know, it's quite a big community. 
absolutely, Jim Jeffries, et cetera, et cetera. So sure. back to you and your awesomeness. When you look at an actor's IMDb page, sometimes it's current, sometimes it's not, but I see there's a lot of nothing on there is in post-production and dope sick. Are there a lot of other things going on for you? Yeah, I'm actually, um, yeah, I'm on location right now for, for dope sick. Um, and I have a horror movie coming out called Cobweb with Lizzie Kaplan and Anthony Starr that I'm really excited about. Um, and yeah, we'll see. We'll see what else. And then do you have plans to make more music? Because as you said before, that's a, a pandemic thing for you. Yeah, I actually, in quarantine, I uh, wrote a whole album. So wow. yeah, so it's just a matter of now having the time to get to the studio and like finding a safe situation in which to record said album. But um, yeah, it's all written and, and ready to go. So more music to come. So that's already enough projects right there. But if you're actually now writing music, does that mean that you're also writing screenplays or that's an eventual ambition of yours? No, that's something that I've actually done already as well. Um, and I plan to do much more of that. I'm, I'm in development for a couple of projects right now. And um, I wrote a movie for a sci-fi called Hover um, that I also started and produced. And um, that was just such an amazing learning experience for me. So um, yeah, I'm really excited uh, to launch my production company and bring out some more films in the future. So watch this space. Apologies for my ignorance on that end. No, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh. Well, two quick questions and then you are free. And the first one is, of course, it's a different answer for somebody who's actually working in the business. But do you have a TV recommendation that you could pass along to somebody who needs a new pick or a new thing? A new thing? Oh, um, um, um. well, it depends what you like. But Marianne by Samuel Baudin, who's he actually directed cobweb the horror movie i just did it's a french horror series depends what you're into but it's very good um well let me think you know i'm someone who just tends to watch seinfeld over and over again <laughs> um, and peep show which is a great british comedy right. i i watch that those are on my rotation constantly um i can't think of a new show right now there's so many everyone's really into bridgerton that's what i hear and I just started watching The Real Housewives um, on a 10 year delay. You I've got become obsessed. Yeah, I, I, I always rejected it. I tend to reject things that everyone's into. I don't know why, it's just something I do. And when I was in Bulgaria, my friend Lizzie Kaplan, who's also my co-star told me, you know, I really, I want us to have something to talk about on set. So I think that you need to start watching The Real Housewives of New York. And I was like, you know what? I will. I respect you. I love your work. I will watch it. And I loved it. So maybe watch that. Will do. Am I closer? <laughs> Any last words? Any last words for the kids? And that could be like, check out my website, or that could be an actual advice thing because, hey, you've done it. Um, Advice for the kids. You know, it always sounds like a cliche, but, and it's also the moral of the right one. Being yourself is probably the best possible thing you can do. And it's hard to be yourself and it takes time to be yourself. Like, I think Prince has that saying, it takes years to become an overnight success. <laughs> you know, and it takes a long time to figure out exactly who you are and what you have to offer, but it's, it's your best bet. Well, thank you so much for your time. Keep up the greatness and really look forward to everything you have coming soon. Congrats on everything you got going on, Cleo. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. Thanks. Take care now. Bye. Outro cast.